here's what we're going to do today. Uh, I like to mix up um, having uh, coursework, you know, the traditional lecture kind of things and, and more activity-based things. I like to at least periodically through the semester give you the opportunity to do an activity because, again, you know, no one learns this stuff by, by listening to it. You know, you don't learn how to golf by watching someone else golf or, or listening to someone say how to golf and all that. You, you do by, by doing it. And um, you have the assignments for that in part, but I think it's also good to sort of have an activity that is sort of managed. Now, we have five people here. I don't know if anyone else is going to come. It would be great if at least one other person come, then we can have three groups of two. All right? Let me describe the activity. And I'm hoping either you didn't hand me for the database class, or if you did, you forgot this one. <laughs> or you had it one of the semesters that I, well, I didn't use this particular example, because I kind of rotate between them. And it's no fair scanning my YouTube channel uh, looking for this so that you can just whip out the right answer. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to implement a database. We're going to create a database. We're going to design a database first. Uh, and then create it for um, like a, a campus activities database. All right. And and what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe what you have. I'm going to describe the situation, and then it's your job to build the database. And my suggestion is that you draw an ERD. Now we haven't talked about ERDs in this class too much. But essentially, ERD, Entity Relationship Diagram, shows the entities in a database and shows the relationship between them. In this case, this would be a one-to-many relationship. Um, a given state has many cities in it, but a given city is only in one state. All right. Um, you're typically going to have one to many, many to many, and rarely one to one. Uh, a lot of one to ones are just typically one to ones, but could be one to many under the right circumstances. Like if you think, probably a, a straightforward example is the relationship between student and major. Yeah, probably most of the time it's a one to one. But don't be fooled that because there are people that can major in two different things. All right? So, if you have a many to many, remember, you have to break it down. If you have a many to many relationship, you have to break it down to two one to many's. I think it's useful to draw these diagrams. Uh, typically, what I do when I do the design process is I will first look through the requirements and identify the entities. And the entities will oftentimes be the nouns. All right. Um, in this case, a city, you know, cities are grouped into states. If I were to look at that, I would uh, look to see, okay, what are the nouns in that sentence? Well, there are cities and states. All right. I then look at the relationship between it. And I might know something about cities and states, but I might also ask someone. For example, there's actually a Kansas City in Missouri, and there's a Kansas City in uh, Kansas. So, is that a many-to-many -many relationship? No, those are just two cities that have the same name, all right, that are in different states. So each, each city is only in one state. Same thing, I think, with St. Louis and East St. Louis or something like that. All right, so you might have to ask questions to find out for sure um, what the situation is, all right? Typically, you would, you would get the requirements by interviewing people. You'd talk to them. You'd look at their documents. You'd look at how they're storing data now. Oftentimes, you know, in today's world, they'll have spreadsheets. You know, back in the old days, and maybe some cases now, they might have books, ledger books, and, and, and forms and stuff like that, all right? But you gather all the information, and you try to talk to a lot of different people in, in the organization. You know, if I was doing a um, if I was doing a database, let's say 
for you know the college. Um, I wouldn't just talk to the administration. I might talk to faculty. I might talk to counselors. I might talk to students. All right. Again, the idea, and I don't know if I brought this up in this class, I remember using this analogy um, in one of my classes. It's like the old parable about blind men trying to describe an elephant, right? Each, each person, you know, one touches the, the tusk, one touches the, the uh, trunk, one touches the leg, one touches the tail, and so on. They each all have a different idea of what an elephant's about. Uh, applications and systems and databases can be like that. Everyone views sort of the world through their narrow perspective. And <coughs> therefore, if you're designing an application that's going to meet a lot of folks' needs, and again, remember when you're de de developing databases, you're developing something that, that you want to be solid because a lot of stuff can be built on top of it. And therefore, getting a range of viewpoints uh, is valuable. In this class, uh, I'm going to play the part of everyone, all right? And I'm going to just define, and I'm going to write out a set of requirements about this database. Um, you won't, uh, you know, you will, it's very unlikely that you will be given a list this straightforward. Your, your job will be to sort of untangle the information from a variety of sources. But you get to learn about that in Huffman's class, all right, the system design class. So anyhow, here's a database that we want to design. We want to design like a student life database. And there are many clubs on campus. All right. Each club can be categorized into one of these following categories. It can be an academic club social club, cultural club, or an athletic club. A student typically belongs to three or four clubs at most. All right, just not enough hours in a day to be in a hundred clubs. All right, so three or four is kind of the maximum for students. Each club has a faculty advisor. store. 
in this example, I'm probably more interested that you get the entities and the relationships correct. All right, so we're going a little lean on, um, on um, the attributes. I'm also maybe, depending on how devious and or absent-minded I am today, leaving holes in my definition. All right? You should do one of two things. Either use your experience in the real world to fill those holes, or, when in doubt, ask me. All right? And, and I'll, I'll be more specific. And it's interesting, well, I, I won't say any more on this. But again, when you interview people to develop a database like this, you know, they're, they're not thinking, in, you know, they haven't had any classes in database design. They're telling you what they know about their job and the data that they use and so on. All right? So they're not thinking in database terms. All right? So they're going to tell you what they know. It's your job to get the information that you need to put this together. All right. So what we're going to do is I want you to break up into groups. All right, there's five of us. I was kind of hoping a six person would show. If they do, they can, they can um, I suppose, join the, the group with two in it, or the group with three can split off and form two groups of two out of that. Uh, but what I want you to do is break up into two groups, three and two, and work on this for a while. Um, I don't know how long I expect this to take you, um, kind of give me an indication when you are confident of, you know, of what you've come up with. And then we'll look at the two alternatives, put them together, and see if we can come to come some conclusions. All righty.